Hey guys, it's Matt from TurboSmart and we're here at the 2023 PRI show in Indianapolis. is all about racing. It's race specific. These are the guys that build cars to go fast. This is Indianapolis. Indianapolis is heavy machinery, things that go fast. Big launch at SEMA, obviously turbochargers. 17 individual part numbers there, multiple different sizes. But uh, what a lot of people forget is we also had seven other new products that we were launched at SEMA as well. So Boostgate, which is an intake boost controller. So rather than having a wastegate on the exhaust, it's really to replace a, a hot side wastegate. And it puts the boost control on the intake side by bleeding boost off the charge pipe rather than diverting air around the turbine housing on the hot side. We also had two more straight gates released at SEMA, 40 mil straight gate and also 76 mil, which is three inches, huge, enormous straight gate, flows more than twice any other wastegate on the market. Some smaller releases, things like our pro oil pressure regulator. So it's not uncommon to see on some aftermarket turbo chargers when you see a back off or on startup. The turbo itself isn't actually spinning. It's not a big turbo with a lot of oil pressure on startup. You do get a puff of smoke or quite a lot of blue smoke at idle. Uh, and the reason for that is because you've got a lot of oil pressure going into the bearing housing, uh, if the turbo is not spinning, it's not actually slinging the oil off the oil slinger. So it can seep out through the seals and into the exhaust so you get a lot, a lot of blue smoke. So we have our Pro OPR, which is a boost reference turbo oil pressure regulator. So similar to your fuel pressure regulator being referenced to manifold pressure. Well, the, in this case, the turbo oil pressure regulator is linked to the boost pressure. So as the boost pressure goes up, oil pressure onto the bearing goes up by that idle and when the turbo is not spinning it drops that oil pressure down to something a little more reasonable so there's a lot less flow of oil going into the turbo still enough to lubricate the bearing because it's not actually spinning a great deal which is actually the problem uh, so it eliminates a lot of that blue smoke on startup and idle on some turbos that have that issue we've also got the raceport em valve which is electrically mechanically operated block valve so that's not necessarily new but the size of it's new so a uh, raceport's one of our uh, bigger block valves but adding the solenoid to the top of it, the bullet valve to the top of the valve allows you to do some, some pretty cool stuff actually. So similar to the boost gate, uh, which bleeds air off on the intake side of things, you are actually able to, with the right control strategy, uh, hang the, the blow-off valve open on two-step and on spooler. So that can be really um, advantageous for guys that still have, let's say, a streetcar or something high performance, because it allows you to effectively do a little bit better boost control. Not so much better boost control, but as you're on the two-step, you can be bleeding some air off the intake, which allows your turbo to be spinning at a faster rate, because it is actually producing additional airflow through it, but it's not all going into the engine, which you think, why would you want to do that? Well, if you're only controlling the boost by bypassing air around the turbine, then it's it's at a set speed for the amount of boost you're producing. If you're bypassing some through the intake, your turbo can be spinning faster than the amount of boost you're producing. So when you let the clutch out or you release the trans brake, you're actually, your turbo is spinning fast enough to make more boost than it's currently making. So it comes on boost a lot faster. So that's a pretty cool feature of that, uh, that block valve. There's been a lot of talk about the sizing, the full range of turbos, like I said, 19 different part numbers. We've got quite a bit of feedback now. So the first run of turbos has gone out into the wild and there's plenty of them going on cars. The feedback's been twofold. So two major things that we're hearing. One is guys that have bought a turbo that they thought was the right size and it's spooling up so much quicker that they're actually like, ooh, maybe I can step up a size in turbo to make more boost. The other side of that is, so I guess the opposite side, which is you can take the same turbo and make more boost. Uh, so two major things, you're either gonna end up with a similar size turbo that spools up quicker, or you step up a turbo size so it spools up the same time, but you, you're making more boost. So there are two things to think about when you are selecting the turbo, if you're comparing to some of the competition. Like for like, it's either gonna spool up quicker, or maybe step up a size, spools up the same as the smaller size in some of the competition, but you're able to make more boost. So they've been the big feedback. Apart from that, people have been loving them, which is great. The other thing is weight. 
a lot of people commenting about the weight. They're very light in, in comparison to some of what else, yeah. I guess what else is on the market. So it's been pretty cool. Um, the biggest issue really has been we've already sold out. It's always hard to judge how many of something you're going to sell. Obviously a big investment with a lot of sizes, big investment in components yeah. uh, in the first production run, a lot of machining, a lot of balancing, all that sort of stuff. So it's been really exciting to see the take up the excitement. It's actually a little bit difficult to know because we sold everything. It's like, what's going to be more popular? I don't know, because we sold everything. Uh, so that's really exciting for us going into next year. I'm already working on some new castings, some new housings, T4 divided flanges, some smaller stuff. Toward the back end of next year, 2024, uh, we're really excited. We're going to have quite a few new turbo part numbers sort of coming online in the, the front half of the year, mainly for the water-cooled stuff. But really, the back end of the year is where we're going to see more sizes again, probably down the range size-wise first, but we've also got some bigger turbos on the way. What comes out first will probably depend on production schedules, but it's super exciting. We've released 20 odd new products in a month and we've got at least that amount to come out again. So we're pumped. Uh, keeping up with the supply and keeping up production is going to be the biggest challenge, but it's a good challenge to have.